Hello everyone and I have another. Absolutely must see chess game by Paul Morphy and in this chess game Paul Morphy has the white pieces and his opponent is the river. A chess game from 1863 when Morphy made a return. For the first time since 1859. A must see chess game by Paul Morphy. So I think this was, believe it or not, but one of the most incredible chess games of Paul Morphy ever. And this was a must see chess game. So let's see what happened in this chess game without further delay. In chessgames.com database, some chess games has puns and funny nicknames and funny titles. This game's title was The Dancing Queen. Why did they call this chess game The Dancing Queen? You will see why shortly, so let's check out why they call this chess game The Dancing Queen. Paul Morphy starts the game with pushing the pawn e4, e5, knight to f3, knight to c6, and we see the Italian game Evans Gambit. So this is pretty much a standard stuff, especially for the Romantic era, exchanging the pawns, developing the knight, and slowly also Derivere is developing, but Morphy is faster, attacking the queen. Well, Derivere is defending the queen, and then Paul Morphy is attacking the queen once again, queen to f6, and then Paul Morphy pushed the pawn. At an early stage of this chess game, Derivere found himself defending the queen, hoping to escape. Paul Morphy's attack, so exchanging the pawns and then defending the queen. But now Paul Morphy pushed the pawn, threatening to capture the pawn. F6. Every move of Paul Morphy is a threat. Attacking the queen again, queen to c5, and then Paul Morphy is attacking the queen again. Paul Morphy is saying, dance, dance for me. Well, there was a scene in the Back to the Future movie, one of my favorite movies of all times. In Back to the Future 3. Biff Tannen, who was a terrible villain in the movie, attacking, shooting with his pistol to Marty McFly's boots. And Marty McFly was running, jumping around, and Tannen was saying, dance, dance for me. This was like this. <laughs> Paul Morphy is saying, dance, dance for me. Dancing queen, queen to G5. <laughs> Incredible stuff by Paul Morphy. Well, if capturing the bishop, then queen to h5, check. And there are some possibilities if king to d8, then checking the king, and then you get the picture. This is falling apart. And actually, this was a deep calculation, so this is why Paul Morphy is sacrificing the bishop. If pushing the pawn, then capturing the pawn. And this is better than capturing the rook. So checking the king, attacking the queen and checking the king, and everything is falling apart. Bishop takes on d4, and you get the picture. So let's continue this chess game. In the real chess game, the Rivera is defending the queen, attacking the queen, but not capturing the poisoned bishop. Defending the queen. And then attacking the queen again by Paul Morphy. <laughs> defending the queen. <laughs> Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Paul Morphy captured the bishop, capturing with the queen, and then attacking the queen. Morphy says, dance. Dance the river. Queen to a5, and then knight goes back, the reverse said, Oh, thank God, I can breathe now. But now Paul Morphy is attacking again. The river captured the knight, capturing back, defending the queen. And then Paul Morphy is checking the king. And the river is escaping, of course you can't play. King to f8 because of queen to f7, that is checkmate. So moving the king was played in the real chess game. But if pushing the pawn, what happens then? Then of course capturing the pawn, this is check, discovered check to the queen, sacrificing the knight, but capturing the queen, so this is losing. After basically checking the king, black has to escape, black has to... Black has to run away, but then Paul Morphy played rook from a to d1 and the river resigned. Because there is no sensible defense in this position. What an incredible chess game. This was, this chess game was known as the Dancing Queen chess game in the database. And in my opinion, one of the most incredible chess games of Paul Morphy, which defined his style. Paul Morphy was constantly attacking his opponent, not giving his opponent any chance to develop, any chance to capture a piece, any chance to play confidently and he is not giving any chance to his opponent to play normally.
because his opponent had to defend against Paul Murphy's rapid attacks, quick attacks. So this is why in this position there were resigned. And you can't defend your king in this position because there is going to be a discover attack. So bishop takes on e6 and then checking the king and then rook takes on d5 is just one possibility. And in this position as you can see black is hopeless after rook from a to d1 this is why they were resigned. Incredible chess game by Paul Morphy once again and I am not exaggerating. Paul Morphy was playing like a chess machine. He was playing like stockfish in, in the 19th century. Imagine what would happen if we could bring Paul Morphy from the dead. What would happen if he would study the modern chess theory with the computers, with the help of computers. Imagine Paul Morphy competing every day online. I think he's, I'm not sure, of course. I'm not saying that he would be as good as Magnus Carlsen. Maybe he would, probably he would. Or maybe not, I can never know that. But he would be a great player and he would easily be a grandmaster. In this chess game, all of the moves of Paul Morphy was like computer moves. Very strong player, seriously. Some people are saying things like, oh, they are exaggerating Paul Morphy. Paul Morphy is so overrated. That's what some people say. Some skeptic says Paul Morphy was so over exaggerated he was so overrated in my opinion he was underrated seriously because the way Paul Morphy defeated Deriver was just simply incredible and Deriver was like almost Chigorin level chess player don't forget that and thank you for watching and I hope to see you next time with more chess games like this take care and bye bye